So now, in the last video, we did the N channel enhancement mode uh, MOSFET. Now we're going to do the uh, P channel MOSFET. So they uh, work basically the same except for polarities are opposite. So the control voltage is going to be opposite. We have the uh, base there, or not the base, the gate at the uh, positive supply right there. That is holding it off right now. If we want to uh, turn this transistor on, we move the jumper to the negative supply. Now, you'll notice we're in kind of a middle ground region while we are floating here. My body can give it uh, false signals too. And um, that's the uh, problem that uh, you may have in some circuits. So I wrote a little note here that uh, you could add a pull up or pull down resistor. So let's say um, we want it off when the switch is in the off position, but uh, when it uh, breaks from the off position, we want it on, then we could add a pull down resistor. Usually it's like 10K, but a 10K resistor that goes to the negative supply, that will instantly turn it on while this is floating. Make sure it's on. And um, if we want it, so we have to, uh, you know, turn it on with the switch right there. So moving the switch there, which we have in this position, and we want it to definitely turn off as soon as we break this while it's floating in the air. There you can see it did not turn off. Then we could add a pull up resistor and uh, that would do it. Usually you use like 10K right there. Um, so it just gives the gate basically an instant charge while the uh, jumper is floating. Um, right now it's going to hold whatever charge it has other than the stray signals that it's picking up. Hopefully that makes sense. If you are controlling it with an integrated circuit, integrated circuits uh, instantly jump from one supply voltage to the other the best that they can. Um, they can't all get to the full, uh, usually positive supply voltage, uh, but uh, usually their voltage is high enough to completely turn the transistor on or off, basically instantly. Now, there is a little bit of current that flows when you uh, change the uh, voltage, and so you may kinda wanna cut that down a little bit, prevent like a, you know, a static shock or something um, from damaging the gate, because they are a, a little easy to damage. I haven't damaged one yet, but I damaged integrated circuits with CMOSs in them. Um, so, you know, still adding a resistor might not be a bad idea if it's going to either uh, supply voltage. But uh, usually you don't see that in the uh, basic uh, circuits. Um, but it just takes a small charge to uh, change the uh, channel. So this is P channel. We got the gate there. It's kind of like a capacitor. When you get the gate more positive, the channel becomes more negative. When you get the gate more negative, the channel gets more positive. And you know, there's some current moving because it's like a capacitor, builds up a charge, but it's opposite on each side right there. And uh, current can't just keep flowing through forever. There's insulation between the two. It just uh, changes uh, whether one side's more positive or negative, and then the other is the opposite, of course. So since it's P-channel enhancement, that means we want to get the gate more negative. That makes the channel more positive. Pushes electrons out of it. In the way that it's built, that means that it's going to conduct better when it's a P-channel enhancement right there. And once it's conducting, it's basically conducting freely. You know, they do have some resistance. That's something you can look in the data sheet, how much resistance they have. Uh, but when it comes to lighting the LED, it's uh, practically no resistance compared to 220 ohms right there. So I don't know the exact resistance for this particular transistor. I'm using the BS250, by the way. And uh, here is the pin layout. So you can see BS250. We have the uh, drain, the gate, and the source. The uh, uh, component that I'm using there. This is called E-Line Package. Good, I did write it down there. Um, that's in the E-Line Package. That's where I had to buy it. I think it's easy to buy it in the TO22 uh, uh, package, which uh, this I think this is the one I used in the last video, 2 and 7,000. Usually you can't read that uh, on camera, but it's easy to read in person. Um, but uh, I had to get E-Line Package, uh, so that's my pin layout. If you can get them in the TO92 package, it may have a different pin layout. I do not know. But uh, there you can see, the drain is going to where the load is, headed to ground, source to the positive supply, right there. So opposite polarities of the end channel. The gate's the control, right there. And uh, we'll zoom over. So yeah, we have the little side uh, to the right, right there. This is the uh, wider side. It's the littler side, that is the front. It has the part number written on there. Uh, so we got drain, 
uh, gate and the source on top right there. Using a 220 ohm resistor to protect the red LED from five volts. Red LED is gonna drop about uh, two volts, leaving about three volts across the 220 ohm resistor, which will set uh, the current. And I think, um, uh, okay, the transistor's in the off position, that's why. Now the LED is on. And we're getting about 12 milliamps of current again, which uh, I got with the end channel enhancement mode MOSFET. So I don't know if, uh, I think we should be getting like 13, but this isn't as accurate as a multimeter. It's usually about a milli, uh, about a milliamp off. And uh, so uh, that's our milliamp area there for a single digit. So that's uh, like 12 milliamps. And it's just going kind of haywire because I'm bumping the power supply and uh, some connections may come loose. Uh, but in case, it's conducting uh, pretty much fully. We could look at, uh, you know, how much it's like limiting, but we're also going by what the power supply says, not a multimeter. And uh, so it's not as accurate as a multimeter. But uh, yeah, I think I covered pretty much everything except for this note right here. Very important thing. There's no universal symbol for MOSFETs. A lot of people don't like the symbols that I use, but uh, I got them from the book, The Art of Electronics. They showed a bunch of different symbols. And in most cases, I think uh, this one will work out best for me. Not always circled, though. And uh, I think I didn't quite draw the... I, oh, I didn't draw this right there long enough for the example I took from The Art of Electronics. I forgot to make this uh, a little bit longer. It comes out both ends. But it's basically the same symbol. Again, there's no universal symbol. And uh, so I never got around to, like, uh, changing it. That's just the symbol I'm going to use. Um, so... Uh, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help a lot. I'll see you in the next video.